Today we are uh, we we had a request to do uh, some candle modeling. Um, I know that I need to teach you guys some stuff about uh, the abyss, so maybe I'll I'll squeeze the abyss in here. Um, I'm probably going to be doing some stencil work today inside of Substance Painter as well. Uh, so a couple of things that we're going to do, we're going to try to treat this nice and organic, um, get through some stuff, and uh, we'll see what what comes out of this uh, Zoom training today. Okay. Um, so come along with me. So let's get started with that candle because I know that that was a request from one of the students. Um, now, or can candle is pretty much going to be a really you know organic asset, especially if it's being repeated over and over again. Um, you know that may be something that would that may be sculpted or may not be. It depends on what you're working with. Uh, working in in Maya today. Uh, we'll go over how we can kind of make a candle look pretty good in Maya, hopefully, and uh, most importantly, optimize it. Um, and this is going to help out in the point where we won't have to do any retopo or decimation of a model, really. So maybe the, the geometry might still look good. We'll see what happens, okay? Obviously, we're going to start off with a cylinder here. Um, Scale this thing up, open up my channel box and give me give me some options here. Um, candle's gonna be a little thick here. Or we're gonna get we're gonna go longer with the candle. I don't really need any divisions down the side right now. Maybe I will later on. We'll see. Um, I'm gonna give this guy some caps. Just so I can have a little bit of control over that. And I guess I'm like, weird music there. I'm trying to get used to my new monitor setup here. Uh, let's start off with a bevel to kind of round this stuff out a little bit. And then I am going to insert an edge loop here. I mean, the. The gist of what I'm doing here is that we're gonna try to uh, get that get that rim kind of set up there first. Okay, so get a little bit of this rim thing going here. Um, I'm also going to sync this geometry in a little bit. So let's take some geometry here and let's sync it in like this. All right, so that's the that's the start. We're starting to get our shape going here. Um, Soften that topology out. We'll start to see that shape happen. Okay. You know, normally when wax melts, it kind of melts outwards, and then we start getting dripping down to side. So we want to start off with those shapes first. That's so going to give us a platform to work with. There is going to be a lot of intersection going on here today, so it's not going to be as you know. It's not going to be as clean as the, the rest of the stuff you may be working with. So, you know, that's just a disclaimer for that one. All right, so now I'm gonna get started on some dripping. We'll get some dripping started here. Now, I mean, if you want, a, if this is going to be like a huge candle, in an environment, you probably would sculpt that in so it's a nice higher resolution. A lot of the stuff that I'm that we deal with with candles with with hard surface props are usually smaller candles that are hanging up really high up, and uh, you know things you know hanging from chandeliers or up inside of a up inside of a lamp post or something. So you know we're gonna treat it we're gonna treat this like one of those smaller models that aren't really like a whole portfolio piece, something that's really close up or vi really visible. So I'm going to take a sphere and we're gonna start with the end of that drop first, okay? Um. We don't want a lot of geometry, once again, because we're not we're not working too close to this model. So something like that will do the job just fine. Um, now I'm going to 
Delete some edges. We'll get started with that right now. Oh, I'm just gonna detach and delete some of these guys here. I'm going to grab some edges, like or grab some vertices like this. Kind of pull up on it. I realize, uh, you know, this is not the greatest looking thing. We can probably get some divisions up here afterwards. Uh, and we can use the formers too if things need to get cleaned up a little bit more. Let's get some edge loops up here. Um, let's just do one right now. Because I, I want to widen it back out again. And really, like, I really want to push this lump that happens up here. Once again, I know that this is going to seem a little cartoony looking, probably. You'll see where I'm getting at here, though, in a minute, hopefully. Kind of do some shapes like this and, uh, you know, kind of get like a little bit of a taper or like a curved shape in there. We want this to seem really organic. I'm going to insert an edge loop in here and try to like get that good drip shape happening. Let's widen this guy up a little bit more here. Now there are good deformers that can do this stuff for us too. Like you can use the, uh, oof, that's too much. I may, I may need to do this by hand. Um, some good deformers that can do this uh, for us is like the flare deformer has a curve in the middle of it. So you could do little curves in there. So that's, that would be a nice one for this shape. You have a lot of topology here. I'm just inserting edge loops now with the shift tool getting some of those shapes in there and, uh, and I'm gonna drag some of these guys inwards like this so we get a little bit more of a bulge down here basically X these guys out and go inwards a little bit more here just get a nice curved shape like that um, I think I need like one more edge loop in here to kind of sell this thing there we go. Okay. That seems good to me. We might be able to get rid of some of this geometry, but I think we're pretty solid here right now. Uh, my last, the last thing I'm going to do here too, is I'm going to like bridge this guy in. Let's put a division or two in there. And I just want to kind of make more volume in this lump thing. something like this here let's just fill this hole and poke it bam like that all right a little bit of pour off volume is kind of what i'm shooting for here you know when when candle kind of drips out it kind of has like a little bit of a you know like a little mound that it builds up there i guess what you would probably call it. So I want to give this thing a little bit of a, that mound shape. Let's rotate this guy inwards here too. Soften that up. All right, and let's soften this whole shape up actually. There we go. All right, one little driplet. I think we're pretty good on this one. Freeze my transformations. Let's enlarge this guy because that's, you know, a bad shape pretty much. Um, here, let me uh, do me a service here and let's snap our pivot to a vertice. Now I can get some depth and kind of put this thing where it needs to be. Once again, this guy is kind of straight right now, so 
How am I going to correct that? What do you think? How do we how do we get things to not be straight anymore? We bend it. In this scenario, it's trying to bend it the wrong way. That's okay. You didn't know what you were doing, Maya. Okay. So this deformer doesn't really have a lot of influence, so let's I'm gonna scale it in. So that, that so that way the deformer kind of uh, pushes in to a closer area. All right, there we go. I think that's a little bit better. We'll delete our history, freeze our transforms, all that good stuff. Um, I still think we need a little more scale. Let's go just a little bit bigger. If this stuff is going to get modeled in, you know, make it significant, make it big. Okay. All right. So I got some shapes here. I mean, really it's your call. Uh, are these, are these wax strippings going to be big? Not let you know, are they going to be normal mapped on or are they going to be, uh, or are they going to be modeled on with the game rest? You know, maybe. Here's what I'm going to do, too, before I go around trying to duplicate some of these things. Let me pull out a little bit on that. Okay. Uh, before I go trying to duplicate this thing, let's turn my wireframe on and let's, make, let's choose a new pivot here. We'll choose the middle of the cylinder. Now, if I try to, if I duplicate any of this guy around, and rotate it, I'm rotating along that cylinder and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be in the right spot where they're at, you know, wherever I am. I can enlarge it and make them longer. All right, and I can shrink them and make them smaller. Let's duplicate again. And we could do like a really small one now. You know, kind of lift it up a little bit. You know, it, this one's kind of a, this is also kind of a thin, or you, you, you may want this to be a little bit thinner. So that's definitely gonna be something where we're gonna have to uh, change the pivot back over here again, because that's gonna skew it in. work this thing a little bit as long as the position is in the right spot you know we'll get some little pieces in here all right um i duplicated it let's move another one around over here some you know if if you do this the right way some of these wax drippings um Some of these wax drippings can be normal mapped in and some of them can be modeled in. Okay. You know, this one's kind of flaring up a little bit too high up here. So we'll kind of lower it down. All right. And I'll probably, you know, I could probably just get like one more of these guys in there. What? Okay. Sorry. Right, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Okay. So we get the idea here, probably. Um, just duplicating some things. Kind of uh, giving us a little bit of chaos with, uh, with how we're scaling things. You know, find some little middle markers that are... Uh, they're going to give us some different lengths here. Um... Like I said, you know, we can, you can have, uh, you can have some really tiny ones like this one. Sorry. Let 
we can have some really tiny ones like this around the model with you know different sizes and stuff and you know the little ones can be uh those ones can be normal mapped on while the big ones are uh are left there you know no one's going to be able to tell the difference with the little ones because the big ones are kind of there to set the silhouette so your high res can be a bunch of big ones and or your game res could be a bunch of big ones and your your high res can be ones you know a couple of extra small ones in there too scatter this stuff out okay and then and you can also you know maybe you can bring some of these guys together and make some uh Make some mergers. You're free to intersect with this model because it's organic. You can kind of squeeze some of these shapes together. Um, baking this is going to be kind of weird as to what you want to combine together and what you don't want to combine together. But, you know, these small ones that we're sticking together here... Uh, I'm going to say you're going to want to center the pivot and shrink them down a little bit and just make them a lot smaller um, and just let them bake onto the candle itself. Don't let them bake onto the wax drippings, okay? And then we just put our little wick in here. You know, you could put a cylinder in there yourself or, you know, we can just... Since, uh, since we already have the geometry here, you know, instead of me wasting faces stabbing a cylinder in here, we can just um, we can just grab those faces and extrude those. Just deselect all of that, and extrude up. All right, a little wick. Put a little curve on it, whatever it needs to. Probably, I would say, collapse a bunch of these edges down because you have a lot of geometry in here. All right. There it is. We can even put a flame in here. Javier's coming in. Once again, probably don't need as much geometry. If you're going to do something like a flame, I would just do like an, it's almost like an emissive Christmas bulb, probably. So you really don't need a lot of geometry. You probably don't even need UV space. Uh, you could just render this thing. Nice and simple. Get like a soft select here. Pull up on it. Um, and what I like to do is just let go of the soft select and kind of pull, or just, you know, maybe I just adjust the soft select a little bit more. Kind of get that final point in there. Soften this guy out. And uh, what you do with this guy is you pretty much just make it an emissive and just let it glow. It really doesn't need texture space or UV space. You can make it another material, just like uh, um, just like you do with glass. Okay, if it's if it's just if it's a, a piece of geometry that's just filled up with a with one kind of uh, effect, then it doesn't need texture space. You can make it just a, a shader. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna make a new shader. Let's do a surface shader. Change the output color to just like yellow. Give it a glow. And that's pretty much what it's going to be. And the bloom filter in Sketchfab and, and, you know, Unreal and stuff are going to put a bloom around it 
And that's all it has to be. There, there doesn't have to be any textures to it. Just make it another material and just play with the material effect. Don't give it UV space. Okay? Doesn't need to bake. Doesn't need to be there at all, really. Only on the game rest. Bottom of our candle here. We can get rid of that. Probably, you're never probably going to see the bottom of the candle. Let's get rid of that guy. That saves me from those softening errors down there anyways. Okay. Cool stuff with the candle. I will... Let's save this guy out here. If you guys want to do a flame too, we can do some cool stuff with that, actually. Let me see if I can duplicate this and do um, a cool flame effect. Effect Wouldn't that be nice, right? Let's do... So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn wireframe on here so we can see wireframe. Uh, and I'm going to change... Uh, come over to serp mesh display and reverse the normals inside out, okay? And uh, with back face calling turned on, this is what's gonna happen with your models, basically. Back face calling should work automatically here. I'm just gonna grab it, that difference here. We're seeing inside the model now, by the way. Um, let me make a new material that's exactly the same as the last one, basically. Surface shader. We'll do an output color of red. It's an outer glow. And there we go. So the exterior of this light is inside out. This is kind of how you get that, that outline around things. Okay. Exterior is inside out. And we're only seeing the back faces through this thing. Pull this guy up here. The inside is doing the right thing. Everything's shooting outwards. The interior is shooting inwards. So that's why we're seeing that difference there. 